7M timing. If you replace the CPS or if you take it out, put it back in, uh, you need to time the ignition again. I'm going to go through how to do that. Uh, I don't have the CPS out at the moment, so I can't take a good uh, shot of what you need to line up. There's a little tooth uh, or a, a, a divot cut out of the uh, rotating assembly that you line up with uh, a part of the CPS housing, and I'm not explaining this very well, but I'll see if I can insert a picture while I'm talking here. Um, so you need to line that up, and the engine needs to be a top dead center. And you can ensure that by uh, looking at the cam lobe right inside the oil filler cap. Uh, in the TSRM they explain where zero is, uh, if you look at just the crank, which you probably can't see right now on video, maybe, no. Um, zero and 180 degrees out look the same. Uh, what makes the difference are the cam gears. Um, I lined this up because I had this cover off, and then you can see the cam gears, you know where zero is. If you don't have this off, like you probably will not, uh, you can look through here to find where top dead center is. You can also uh, take out the spark plug there and number one and watch the cylinder go up and down. That will give you an idea where zero or 180 is, but uh, to know where zero is, uh, you need to look through here. So I'm going to start the car. Uh, it should be close. Uh, it is really common that you insert the CPS and you are one tooth off. And if that's the case, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to time it because you're probably going to be off enough that you can't adjust this to get timing where it needs to be. Uh, timing should be 10 degrees before top dead center, and I'll try and grab a light, uh, timing light, and demonstrate that here. Okay, timing light is connected and set up to run. Uh, so I'm gonna step through the process here. Uh, first thing, you jumper the uh, TE1 and E1 terminals. That's what you would do to check codes. Uh, so you do that, um, terminals uh, are right in here, labeled on the lid of that cap right there. What you want are the one in the middle and then the top right, or the, yeah, the top right if you're looking at it from here. Um, I don't need the jumper there because I have a, uh, I have a switch in here that I wired up when I redid my harness. Um, and I have not cleared engine codes, so I need to do that first. If you do have engine codes, pull the ECU fuse and uh, clear those, and then you'll see the check engine light flash quickly, which I'll show you in a moment here. Okay, removed the ECU fuse, um, and I've had it sitting for a few moments here. Uh, you want to leave it out for about 30 seconds, make sure you clear any codes that are stored in memory. So ECU fuse going back in. Put in the little fuse grabber guy here, if I can. Okay. Put that guy back on. Alright, so I should be able to start it now and see the codes have been cleared. And we can demonstrate that. So fast blinking, that is what we want. That shows that there is no current code. So I'll go ahead and start it. And it's having a hard time, so that means my timing is probably out. So it's really struggling. And I bet you as soon as I move the CPS, there you go. All right, so it's having a really hard time. So the timing is probably off. And I may need to set the phone down here to use both hands. So I'm shooting the light in there. And hard to see, but I'm at about six degrees before top dead center, which is actually not far off. 
So I'm going to tighten down this bolt a little bit so that it stays on its own. Right now it moves a little bit too much. Yeah, there we go. All right. So you want to have that bolt tight enough that you can rotate this uh, freely or loose enough that you can rotate it freely, but tight enough that it'll stay. Uh, you want it to have a little bit of resistance there so that when you let go, it's going to stay put. Uh, and then when you finally dial it in and you've got a really reliable 10 degrees before top dead center, uh, then you can go ahead and tighten that down. So if we look at the TSRM here, so they've got an idle speed spec. Um, I have a really basic timing light, so I don't have a tack on this. Um, ideally, you would have a, a good timing light with a tack on the light. Um, and the way it gets that signal, the way a timing light works, you've got positive and negative feeds there. And then you've got a magnetic uh, connector there that you go around the number one spark plug wire. And that gets the ignition signal from number one. So that's how that's connected. And this guy pulses when that signal goes through. And then you can see where it's timed down there. So anyway, um, with the check engine light uh, blinking quickly because you've got these terminals jumpered, you should get about that idle speed. And then using the timing light, you want to get 10 degrees before top dead center. Then you remove it, remove the, uh, the jumper and the diagnostic block, and then you should have timing more than 12 degrees before top dead center. So you want it to advance just a little bit more. Uh, and if you can achieve that, then you're all set. Um, if you do right around 10 degrees, you're, you're fine. You don't need to be incredibly precise, uh, but the more accurate you can be, the better. So uh, I'm going to put the phone down here and tighten up that bolt and come back to hopefully a timed engine for you. And that'll be it. Okay, I have got it timed quite well right now. And I have no idea if this is going to show up very well on camera. Uh, but what I'm going to attempt to show you, uh, right now it is jumpered. Uh, I, again, I don't have a jumper in there right now. I've got a switch wired up into the cap. But it is jumpered. And you can see that mark, it is right about at 10. Just about dead on. Okay, and I've already got it tightened down, so that's not going to move anywhere. So I'm going to flip the uh, diagnostic switch off. And one thing I forgot to note, uh, if you have the AC on, you will trigger a code 51. Um, that's what that means. When you're trying to set timing, uh, you got to have the AC off. Otherwise, it messes with the idle speed and it, it just it throws everything off. So um, if I flip back my diagnostic switch, now it's clear. But watch, if I click on AC now maybe it won't do it now but it did it earlier so it'll give you a code 51 at any rate so AC off um, uh, alright before we had 10 degrees top dead center which is what you want now without it jumpered we should see our timing just barely ahead of 10 and we do it's at about 12. So that looks dead on. Uh, the engine's idling really smooth. Uh, you can almost adjust this just by sound. Uh, it'll sound a lot better once you get in that good range, right about where it should be. Um, that should get you close, uh, but you definitely need the timing light to do it right. Uh, you can't do it by sound accurately enough to uh, replace the timing light. I don't care how good your ears are. So. Uh, there you go, there's timing on a 7M. I'll take off the timing light, and uh, this guy is, is tightened down. Uh, there's a torque value for that, you can torque that precisely, and that's it. I got everything connected, so uh, there you go. Job done. I've done uh, timing on a 7M probably 50 times in the last seven, eight years, and this was probably one of the easiest. And that may have something to do with the fact that I've done about 50 of them. But uh, sometimes it can be a pain. Sometimes you'll end up with the CPS one tooth off and you got to take it out and then retime the crank and make sure it's on zero and not 180 and it's a huge pain. Uh, but it just takes, takes some practice. You may need to do it 10 times, um, but you should be able to get it.
There you go. 7M timing. YodaMD.com. Check out my website. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks.